Welcome back to I Like Watches and welcome to video number two on the really quite interesting and unusual watches by Halcyon. Now, you may have seen my first video on these watches where I spoke primarily about the dials. And I think the porcelain dials are really the main talking point when it comes to these watches. And that's one of the reasons why I felt I needed to produce a dedicated video on porcelain dials. Because, well, they really are not your sort of typical watch dials. They are incredibly difficult to make and that makes the watches that generally house them very expensive. So if you really want to get the most out of this video, I would suggest at some point going back and watching the first video so that you can truly understand what goes in to making a watch with a porcelain dial. Now, of course, there is more to these watches than just the porcelain dials, like, for example, the cases. They are made of 64 grams of sterling silver. Yeah, that's right, sterling silver. Why sterling silver? Well, traditionally, porcelain was always paired with silver. If any items of porcelain needed some sort of hardware on it, it was yeah always silver now they have plated these silver cases with rhodium because silver patinas doesn't it so you're not going to see the silver um you just know that it's there i guess and why use silver well i think it leans towards these watches being considered more wearable art than time telling wrist watches yes they do tell the time there is a time telling element on the dial there's an automatic movement inside these watches but really you're not buying these watches to wear all day every day regardless of what you're doing they are occasional wear pieces pieces that you would wear when you I don't know going out to the theater or doing something a little bit fancy and they are conversation starters let's be honest you don't buy watches like this to pop under your cuff and just forget about that being said they are working automatic time telling watches but I wouldn't say they are particularly convenient because well you may have noticed the crown is at the 12 o'clock and it's there because the dial is located where it is. Obviously, you couldn't have the crown on the side of the case because then it would be at the sort of two o'clock position and it would be all off kilter and it just wouldn't work, would it? So during the design process, they have decided to put the crown at the 12 o'clock because this is how they wanted the watch to be. And... I went back to them and asked, are we expected to remove the straps every time we want to adjust the time or wind up the movement? And the answer was, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone said beauty is pain and I think we're experiencing that with this watch. It is beautiful. Porcelain dials are incredible. Again, watch that first video and you'll understand why. And this watch is definitely different. Like I've said, it is a piece of wearable art, but it's not going to be convenient. Now, if you've got delicate fingers, you will be able to wind up the movement without removing the strap. But if the time is wrong, you're going to struggle because the crown just doesn't come out far enough for you to adjust the time without removing the strap, which is a real shame. I think it is a real shame. I don't know how they could overcome that with a, a change here or an alteration there. I just, yeah, I don't think you can. If you want to use the movement that's inside this watch, if you want the dial to be where it is, I don't think there's anywhere else the crown can be. I guess we're just going to have to accept it is one of those quirky details with this really quite unusual watch. So the case is made of 64 grams of sterling silver. It's rhodium plated to give it that beautiful bright luster and it will remain like that. It's not going to patina. But the case back is stainless steel. And there's a few specifications on there, a logo and the name, of course, beautifully etched onto that stainless steel case back. Now, the crystal, of course, is a piece of double domed sapphire crystal, and it is huge. They are giving us every opportunity they can to enjoy this porcelain dial. There are a couple of designs, of course. You've got the sea cliff variation and then the dragon variation. That dragon variation 
has taken over a month just to paint the dial. And I explain why in the first video, but yeah, it is phenomenal. It's one of the reasons why this particular watch is so much more expensive than the C cliff variation. The painting process is painstaking. It also does result in some dials having to be discarded. So the yield rate is quite low. And of course you've got to pay a skilled artisan to paint these dials and it takes a long time a very long time and that's really why you don't see every other manufacturer using porcelain dials in their watches in fact there's only a handful of manufacturers of porcelain watch dials three in fact globally and a handful of watch brands that actually go to those manufacturers for them to make dials for them rolex has made a couple of watches with porcelain dials Glass Chute, Credor, Seiko and Halcyon. I'm sure there's a few other brands out there that use porcelain dials, but there really are not many. Now, I was quite surprised to see the movement inside this watch. It's an NH05. It's an automatic movement beating at 21,600 beats per hour. Hacks, hand winds, 21 joules. It's a tiny little automatic movement. 50 hours of power reserve, though, which is quite surprising for such a small movement and i suspect there's going to be a few question marks over the movement i mean one of these watches is over four thousand dollars and inside it you're getting a miniature seiko nh movement but i think the truth is they've done that to keep the prices down um, these watches cost what they cost because of the porcelain dials and i suspect the 64 grams of silver in the case if you then put premium movements inside these watches the prices are going to match that of glass chute and, you know, other luxury brands that end up using porcelain dials. They are actually trying to, well, with the cheaper one anyway, make a porcelain dialed watch available to more people. So I do understand that decision. I just don't think it's going to be a particularly popular one. The strap as well is a little bit disappointing, if I'm being completely honest. It's a fairly sort of standard faux croc print strap. The buckle is uninspiring. And yeah, I think they probably could have put nicer straps on these watches, but I suspect Anybody that buys these watches is going to buy a very nice strap that they want on these watches anyway. So again, I think it's a case of they're just trying to keep the overall costs as low as possible. I think I prefer the watch with the smaller sort of sea cliff drawing on it because it allows you to see more of the porcelain dial. I mean, at the end of the day, that is really what makes these watches special. It's the porcelain dials, not really the paintings. Yes, the process that these watches have gone through to enable them to have these drawings is fascinating. But at the end of the day, these watches have porcelain dials. That's what we want to see. And I think too much of it is covered up with the dragon drawing. And the more simple watch is considerably more affordable as well. So yeah, I mean, if you were considering one of these watches, I wouldn't just suggest the more affordable one because it's more affordable. I would suggest it because you're seeing more of the actual porcelain. Nice hands. I mean, they suit the watch. Of course, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. In fact, I suspect the vast majority of people watching this video, it's not their style at all. And I know the makers of these watches know that. I mean, the production of these watches is so fraught with problems that the failure rate is so high. If these were incredibly popular and affordable and they were selling huge numbers, I just don't think they'd be able to manufacture them because, well, the yield rate for the dials is less than 10%. So if they sold a thousand units, they'd have to start by making 10,000 dials. And the locations where porcelain dials are made are just not catered or set up for mass production. So no doubt they fully anticipated selling these watches in low numbers. And I have to say, I am thrilled that they invited me to review these watches because I was taken down a watch collecting avenue that I probably would have never gone down. Learning about porcelain and the manufacturing process, it is fascinating. And as a result, I have a new found appreciation for porcelain dials and just porcelain in general I think. I think it is just a big shame that they've not ended up with a watch that is perhaps a little bit more convenient but then again don't forget 
Beauty is pain. Right, guys, I'm sure you are going to let me know what you think of these watches in the comments section. And please don't forget to head over and, yeah, well, down to the video description and click on the link for the first video in which I will explain to you exactly why porcelain dials are so special. Right, guys, as always, a massive thank you from me to you for watching. I do appreciate it.